A lot of you asked me could I do a video on my Soviet gas mask, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. However, the first mask in the list is, list is not going to be Soviet, it's going to be Polish. And the reason for that is I don't have the famous Soviet SHM-41 gas mask, which is an important mask historically. So, I think around World War II, or at least at the end of World War II, the Soviets came out with a mask called the SHM-1. And the SHM-1 was basically the mask all the GP-5 type masks would eventually come from. Now, they're, they're technically known as helmet masks and they have a latex hood, but if I explain them as the GP-5 masks, everybody will know what I'm on about. So, later on they had the improved version, the SHM-41, and this is the really famous one. Now this is the Polish OM-14, but it's a very straightforward copy of the SHM-41. The only difference is it has this cool looking, sort of chromey uh, metal on it, rather than the brown metal the Soviets used and it's sort of a whiter latex rather than the greyer one but other than that it's the exact same thing so the idea was that you had a quick to put on the hood that connected via to a big canister filter you wore on your belt in a haversack so the mask is pretty straightforward not much to it but it does actually have a Tissot system there so in terms of technicality the SHM41 is the one that kick started everything off and I think the GP5's technical designation is SHM62. But um, everybody knows it as the GP5 because it's in the GP5 kit. But there you go. Although this is a stand-in, this is the mask we're going to start off with for our Soviet collection. It's the Polish OM14, but for the sake of this video, it's standing in as the SHM41. Next up we have our tank crewman's mask, the MM1. That stands for Mask Membrane 1, apparently and it's called that because it has a voice diaphragm on it there a plastic membrane that sits between the nose and the outside of the mask at the bottom we have the standard SHM41 intake outtake saying this is the brown soviet type metal there so it has forward looking optics unlike something like um, GP5 SHM41 for example these look forwards rather than sideways that's ideal if you want to look through optics when in a tank it connects with a five point head harness there which you can tighten with elastic on both sides and it's pretty straightforward and simple as I said you could just directly attach a filter to the mask if you wanted to like a lot of these masks but these were designed to use a hose where you could have the filter somewhere out of the way and it wouldn't get you know knock into instruments or anything like that as I said it's an early example of a Soviet mask with a voice diaphragm on and it's a surprisingly good voice diaphragm. They copied it onto most of their masks that did use voice diaphragms. And it does the job it's supposed to do. I think it's quite a creepy looking mask. It bears a lot of resemblance to the Soviet, I think it's called BNT-4, which was their World War II gas mask for the most part. If you took had that mask and then took that off of it, it'd be quite a similar thing. Because one of the things you'll see with most Soviet military masks, or even Soviet civil masks, is that they have lots of common features where they can cheaply produce parts and fit them to other masks to help the logistics of making them because that's one of the things the Soviets and the Russians have always been good with is logistics so there you go the MM1 mask designed for tank crews very effective because it looks forwards and has a voice diaphragm so the mask we have here is the Soviet PMG mask. It was basically designed as a lightweight gas mask. Most people are uh, familiar with it from Half-Life 2 because it's the main influence behind the Metrocop mask. Now I have the GP5 filter on the filter intake here. Normally it would have a double size filter but that's actually quite a poor design because it meant the mask dragged down too much to one side. It has an interesting filter intake because it's mostly rubberized rather than being a metal screw. You have your voice diaphragm here, hidden behind there, a little plastic disc that's replaceable. Your XL valve is at the bottom here. You've got two sort of forward looking front flat plastic eyepieces. And you've got this weird system at the top where it doesn't cover all the head at the back rather than being a full on latex hood. Then you have a strap system you can tighten to try and get a better seal with it. It's generally quite a tight and uncomfortable mask, although it was, you know, advertised pretty much as a lightweight gas mask. It's not really that good in its role, but it's a very interesting mask to look at, nonetheless. Next we have the PMG2, also known as the GP5M or GP6, depending on who was actually given the mask. 
But this is basically where the Soviets found a really cheap way of making a mask they could mass produce for the military and anybody else they wanted to give it to. So, it's made of a latex, same as all the other masks. For the most part it's essentially a GP5. It's got the GP5's intake and outtake at the bottom. But what it's got on the front is the MM1's voice diaphragm. So what that means is you can speak far more clearly because GP5s really do muffle your voice if you try to talk in one, much more than lots of other gas masks of the era do. So you've got your standard eyepieces for it. It's essentially just a GP5 with a voice diaphragm on the front and ear holes in the sides. Apparently some different sizes of these sometimes come without the ear holes and there might be versions of this mask with the voice diaphragm and without the ear holes but for the most part it has ear holes so you can hear better. A lot of people keep saying in the comments why did they put ear holes on this mask that's a really bad design decision you know you'll get killed from gas hitting your ears now that's not true because in the event that you needed a full body suit on to protect you from gas an NBC hood would go over the ear holes anyway but it means that you can communicate more clearly about it if you look at nearly every other gas mask that's not a Soviet one the ears are never covered anyway because a chemical hood would go over them but there you go the PMG2 is basically, let's make a really cheap mass producible mask that does all the features we want and then most soldiers or civilians or whatever else can have this mask. Now we have what in my opinion is the best of all of the Soviet masks. It is the SHMS and this is a mask that was designed for snipers or other people that would need optical equipment. It's got forward facing small eyes that are round. The idea is you can put binoculars or scopes or artillery aiming devices straight onto the mask, so that's really good. It's got the same voice diaphragm we're familiar with. It's got a better Tissot system than the other masks. The Tissots run up the side of the mask there and breathe onto the eyepieces there. And it's got the same SHM41 intake outtake at the bottom. Now, an important thing to know is it's got ears on this, but they are actually a thinner rubber here so you can hopefully hear better than the masks that simply either have normal moulds or, you know, no, never at all. Uses via a hose, connects to any sort of Soviet filter you want it to. This hose has been covered in canvas or stocking net, but a lot of the hoses are just simply rubber. So, as I said, this is my favourite easily of the Soviet masks. You get good vision with it. You can use it with scopes and optics, people can hear you clearly, and it's quite a creepy looking mask. Now we have a really weird mask, it's the Soviet PBF, and I'm not sure if this was issued to soldiers, paratroopers, or riot police, or whatever, but it's basically the Soviet's take on trying to do an M17 cheek filter mask. So you have an XL valve and voice diaphragm here, that's all good. You have cheek filters on each side. They're actually easier to put in than M17 filters because they're sort of an even shape and the mask's stretchier because it's Soviet rubber. You've got your screw on, screw off caps to keep the filters in place. You've got your flat eyepieces again like the SHMS which are very good. And you've got your sort of membraned ears which are also good. Another interesting thing is this mask actually has an inner mask or an oral nasal cup so you can't fog it up which is really sort of clever. So, the weird thing of this is this is a very sort of westernised Soviet mask in a sense. It's got lots of the sort of nice little gimmicks on it that you'd expect from the western masks of the period, but they never bothered putting on the other masks. Now, if this didn't take cheek filters, but it was the exact same mask, and maybe on each cheek you could screw on a 40mm filter, this would have been an exceptionally good mask. The problem being, they put inner cheek filters in it which I've done entire videos on, it's a really stupid concept and it ruins a lot of masks that could have been quite good. But regardless, the PBF's a very interesting novelty because it's basically what would happen if the Soviets made a cheek filter mask and they made one of the best ones available, but it's still a cheek filter mask. And lastly, we have the PMK respirator. Now, this was probably the last uh, gas mask design the Soviet Union made. I don't know if the PMK-2 was actually post-Soviet or at the very end of the Soviet Union. But this is in many ways a modernised mask and in many ways a failure of a modernised mask. Now when you first look at it you think this looks brilliant. They've got big view triangular lenses, they've got a voice diaphragm, they've got a drinking tube, they've got an XL valve that points away from the mask. 
It takes a newer type of filter, although it's still 40mm Gost. Uh, you can even get a filter sock with it to put on. I think that filter sock's around the wrong way. But regardless, um, I'll just take that off so you can actually see the filter in all its glory. The interesting, interesting filter they put on these. Now, the jury is still out on whether these filters are safe or not. Personally, I would not trust them because they were still made to the same kind of design as the old GP5 type filters. And we all know how many Soviet filters have asbestos in. If you want to wear it, that's fine. Personally, I wouldn't do it. So, the issues start with this mask where it has this weird sort of rubber inner mask I can't really explain. It's like when you have the edges of the mask here, there's another bit of rubber that goes inside, which you can see it around when the eyepiece is there on the left side. It's sort of a really weird design. Now, I guess it was to make a better face seal, but what happens in reality is it just sort of gets in the way of your face. And I have no idea what it was actually intended to do other than make a better face seal, but it's a really irritating thing. My other complaint with this mask is it's too squishy. If you look at the rubber, it's typical Soviet sort of hood mask, um, helmet mask rubber, which is not what you want in a mask like this. You want a more rigid face piece. So what that means is the mask is too squishy and will keep doing that into your face when you move around wearing it. Ideally you wanted a mask like, say the S10, S6, anything like that, where you've got kind of a vulcanised rubber at the front. You can still have it give a bit of give, but you want it to be a material that's not going to just compress in at the slightest movement. So this is again on those sad masks where they could have made something really good and it's got a lot of good features but ultimately I'd still rather have something like the SHMS with a proper hood design that works rather than an uncomfortable mask. This is very good at pulling out hair by the way the rubber straps on this thing are sort of quite diabolical. So there you go that's all my military masks I own of the Soviet Union itself not the Warsaw Pact satellite states as long as you ignore that first OM-14 used as a stand-in. Um, Soviet masks are very interesting because they're all built around that latex hood design for the most part, the helmet mask design. And I think often the Soviets made a mistake where they tried to make their masks too westernised and cool at the end. They had a lot of bad features when they could have just kept the simple and robust designs. But regardless, there you go, that is my Soviet mask collection. I hope you've enjoyed the video.